Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Danilo Acquista. I feel like I need to do a Friday dance because it's finally the weekend. And being Friday, it's also time for Win a Home on Afternoon Express, where you could win your choice of one of three incredible homes in an estate in Johannesburg. Now, this show is basically where everybody wins. In the Interior Design Challenge, our three design duos are competing for rewards by transforming three empty cluster homes at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate into lavish living spaces. And then in the Grand Prize competition, Competition, you can win your choice of one of those three completed homes with luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grundig. The total prize value is therefore over 3 million rand, making this the biggest prize on South African television. Now, last week, our design duos got started on their first challenge. It was that all-important guest bedroom. And if you're new to the show, here's a quick recap on their design plans. Last week, we got our first taste of the design duo's vision when they presented their plans for the guest bedroom to their mentors. Okay, color-wise, we introduced a bit of peach, a lighter version of peach, just to warm the room up since it's on the darker side of the house. Along with some interesting paint technique choices, the boldest move was Team Habitat breaking through a wall. Stress is an understatement. We are stressed <laughs> to the core with a capital S. Team VC collaborated with one of their favorite designers, while a beaded zebra was the result of another artistic collaboration. Wow, it's like, welcome to the jungle! As the duos approached the halfway mark, Team House and Leisure realized the difficulty of their feature wall. The few layers that we did, it's not looking as I hoped it will. Only because he doesn't <laughs> trust the process. <laughs> Team Habitat had barely started with their room, and Team VC felt simply overwhelmed. Pretty defeated. Pretty defeated. It's D-Day for the first challenge, and with a five o'clock deadline, our design duos are realizing that 10 days to complete a room isn't as much time as they would have liked. It is the final day, and we know we're close to finishing our warm mural, and it's not looking good. If you're giving a hand at it, would be somewhere, but I'm busy with it and you're on my nerves. But you know I'm not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> but you complain like one. <laughs> this is such a disaster and it's not looking as I thought it would. Really? Does, is it that bad? <laughs> oh buddy, we have less than, literally less than six hours to get this right and we, it's not looking good. Please don't make it any more disastrous. Do you want to give me a hand here? I wish I could help, but I can't. <laughs> I'm not quite happy with the lines that are showing at the moment, and uh, uh, no, stop it. <laughs> Don't do you need to stop it. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I can't remember the last time I actually slept and dreamt at night because of the warm mural. Tempo is actually quite stressful. All he's doing is just sitting and complaining throughout and not supporting yet. <laughs> One thing nobody complained about was the delivery of the Sealy Posturepedic mattresses. Offering the right kind of support to ensure healthy sleep, it was just what Seppo and Banele needed to be more positive. Yay. Our bed is on time. Everything is just on time. Actually, it's very early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. It's really exciting. We have everything still left to do. Um, we need to assemble our bed. We need to get our curtains in. We need to dress the bed. Put um, it independent and style yeah. the whole space. And I still need to run around and get everything because oh. we haven't even finished buying all that stuff. We will finish with the help of the design gods. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the design guru <laughs> I don't know the design gods. <laughs> I know yeah. them. They got me. Oh, oh, okay. Meanwhile, Team Habitat have a novel plan for their artificial grass. 
it's not for the floor, it's for the walls. But the stress of installation day is driving them up the walls. Sure, sure. It's like Beyonce before the Super Bowl oh, yeah. and she doesn't have her backup dancers. The carpenters still need to come and lay down the floors, the cupboards. Need the to go painters. in the painters, the wall, the wall for Bulgari takes still needs to go up. There's a lot of people in that room. My and word. <laughs> and we're trying to do a super standing room, and it's like a party up in here. Right now, it's still a space, <laughs> an empty space. Yeah. So my nerves. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh yes. 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 So we went for a cashmere. Green, green, avocado green. It's when they put on the first lick of paint. Already were, it was. Yes. Yes. This is the one. And this was like <laughs> probably, I mean, now, now. They've just put it on and it's crazy, it's but it's like it's looking great. Really? Like it's, now the wall is starting to look like something. The rooms come to life. Mm. Um, color. It matches like, the grass effect that we've put on the wall. Mm. No, we're happy. Yeah, love it. Yeah. While Team Habitat have struck gold with their choice of Plascon's paint colour time and again, Team House and Leisure seems to have made up for their lost time and are making good headway. We added an L-shaped vanilla noir scissor stone shelf over the bed to increase the value of the property. And also a Mont Blanc on the open wardrobe. To make it a bit different and not have it as we got it off the floor. And it's got so much character now, it's so beautiful. We're excited that everything is here now and... It's looking quite good. Yes. And the only thing that still needs to be done is we need to hang our curtains mm -hmm. and then from there we're on a roll. Yes. I and think I'm, we're going to make it on time. I think um, so too. Quite confident about yes. that. Yeah, and I'm excited about the open wardrobe. Like yeah. it's looking great. <laughs> I'm loving that as well. <laughs> I love how that repeats itself there. Are you finally happy? I'm finally happy. It's not, it's not looking half as bad as I thought it would be. Do you trust me now? I, I do. We're two hours to finish line and everything is coming together as planned. Now we're so busy with our hanger artwork. The lighting is going up and scissor stone is in, the painting is done, the bed is here. The room is actually coming together as planned. Yes, since everything arrived on time, we made sure we planned and pestered everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it coming through? Yeah, coming? some of the people weren't happy with me because I was such a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> and to me. <laughs> Team VC, meanwhile, is nowhere near finished and things are not going according to plan. It is going, it's going, but very slowly. Um, the wallpaper is up, which is quite good. Finally. The floor is finished and the painter is still on a slow motion. And I can't touch anything because if I'm not allowed to disrupt the painter. But he's doing a million touch-ups all the time. And it's starting to scare me. What happens if maybe the paint spills on our furniture? That kind of a vibe. So Anna Marie is in the room and she's giving us great ideas, but I feel like it was too late. So I needed to work and style the room and make it to be perfect. Can I help you move this bed? No, position? Anna Marie, it's fine. You're going to hurt yourself. Lucetto's oh. not here. Somebody has to help you. I know, but it's fine. I can manage this. We've done this before. Are you chasing me out? Anna Marie, you're going to have to leave now because of this is going to be a Don't disaster. Don't call me when the bed has Guys, to be made. As you can see, everything is done. The only thing that's left is styling and doing the whole design part. So the curtains are not in, the carpet is not here. I'm still stressing, so we need to call. I'm chasing Anna Marie out of the room because of, I want to start working now, start cleaning and putting everything together. I love her a lot, but she, she has talks to a go. Lot. But she has to go now. No one is supposed to see the space until it's finished. Even you guys need to be out. You know when they say the calm before the hurricane, it's like, I mean, everything is going wrong. Time is not on our side. And you know when you just wish you could just reverse time and go back, back, back? No, time is never on your side. Sure. And she doesn't stop. No, she does not stop. So. She actually goes faster. She accelerates <laughs> on that break and goes, you don't have any more time. So it's just everything is going wrong, but we're trying to keep a cool head and hoping that we can pull it all together. No, the magic will come together today, I'm telling you. Like one way or another. It has to. 
Yo, 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 my nerd. Guys, we still have to paint. We still have to do the scaffolding green. There still needs to be carpeting. There still needs to be astro all over this entire wall. Not just there, there needs to be lights. How many lights? Five chandeliers, babe. One, two, three, four, five. And two hours. At least we got the zebra done. You see, if the zebra was outside and they were judging it by the pool, that's fine, but that's no use. Where am I gonna put it? By the window? Baby and bus? Guys, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. Cameras. <laughs> Everybody out! Everybody! Sure, guys, it's a war zone. My word. Guys, please, everybody out. Out, 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 out! Heavens, wet paint and frayed nerves are definitely not a good combination on such an important day. And with so much unfinished work from walls to floors, will any of our design duos be finished when the time runs out? We'll find out after the break. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now, before the break, installation day was nothing but drama for our design duos. Walls still being painted, surfaces being installed, and barely a hint of furniture in any of the rooms. It all comes down to the wire as the deadline approaches. All the design duos only had until 5 p.m. on the final day of their challenge to complete their rooms, and it's a mad rush to finish dressing the guest bedroom. Right, so Team House and Leisure, you guys have got 30 minutes exactly to finish up. 30 minutes. Good luck. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> I'm not even panicking anymore. I was falling apart and I managed to pull myself together. <laughs> and I keep on telling you, like, calm down, calm down. But you know, I can't calm down. I need to panic first. I think you just tried and to <laughs> With little time left, Mpo is styling Team VC's room and Lesejo is noticeably absent. I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news, Team VC. You guys have got 30 minutes to finish up. Daniel is in the room and I feel like exploding because of... He's like the ticking bomb. 30 minutes left. Where's Lesejo? Lesejo, she's on her way. She's just getting a mirror and she's just on her way. She's getting a mirror in 30 she's minutes? Getting a mini in 30 minutes, trust me, we're gonna get it done. All right, good luck to you guys, good luck. I think we can do this. Over at Team Habitat, their room is very far from finished. They'll have to move at super speed to present a completed guest bedroom. Well, with 30 minutes to go, it seems like they've called all hands on deck for Team Habitat, and I wonder whether they're going to get ready in time. Guys, will I have a guest bedroom in 30 minutes? Sure. Sure. Well, first of all, we're as ashy as ashtrays, and we're as tired as trams. <laughs> so if by the grace of, I don't know, some miracle happens, yes, you will. You'll have a winning room. All right, guys, why is it taking so long? I think when you have big dreams and big visions of for a room, you need a lot of time. And a lot of people. And so a lot of people. Together. So that's why all hands are on deck. Well, you guys knew your time limits. You need to learn to stick to those, all right? Daniela, get out of the room and give us time. Please come back when it looks nice and I will be more <laughs> hospitable. I think get out of the room, I have a pillow. That's right. <laughs> that is right. Team Habitat seem confident, but with stone being installed, turf being installed, and lights being installed, their to-do list is long and time is short. Our contestant duos have had two weeks to complete their first challenge, the guest bedroom, and the pressure was on. It is, however, that time, and I'm going to be that guy. Contestants, your time is up. We oh. don't yes. <laughs> yes. The bomb just exploded when they said time is up, time oh is up, goodness. time is up, time is up, time is up. Like it echoed like time is up, time is up, time is up, time is up. <laughs> and then it killed me. And with the final pillow in its place, the first challenge is done.
As our design duos have learned, time management is the greatest challenge in this competition. Now, miraculously, they've managed to complete their rooms in the nick of time and their work can be revealed. First up, it's Team VC's guest bedroom. To help maintain a cohesive look throughout their home, Team VC had designed their guest bedroom for a fictional client, which informed the look and feel of the final space. Our room is very intimate, specifically with the colour that we chose. The green comes in very nicely and it makes it feel very comforting. I think our room is very stylish. Every piece that works together nicely and everything that we selected has its purpose of how they look and how they function. So it's more of a hotel feature at your, at your home. Paul and Lesenko have finished their first task in the guest bedroom. So Team VC, tell us about the ideas you had here. So the theme in this room was mm -hmm. Concrete Jungle, um, just like the song, New York. And, um, New York! Yeah. Yes. Concrete jungles where dreams are made of. Obviously, there's a lot of dreams that are going to be made on this bed. So. <laughs> Love it. For our paint, we chose a lovely dark green color in the Plascon interior cashmere, which is a beautiful matte mm -hmm. finish. Um, and we chose this color specifically because it makes the room look a lot more intimate mm. and cozy, which is what you want for your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. In every one of these challenges, you guys are going to be bringing personal aspects to it. What are your favorites of this room? Well, obviously, we love our beautiful custom table mm -hmm. uh, designed by Frank Brand and us at Leonardo Design. We were inspired by one of his pieces and we uh, worked together on it and molded it so that it can reflect our room with the natural resource, specifically the diamond. So it's faceted just like a diamond. The table is gold to represent the city of gold, Johannesburg. The wallpaper is a very literal representation of the jungle with its vibrant leaf print. Surprisingly, it's Impor's love of pink that inspired the choice of the pendant lamp. One thing I noticed about your room was some bespoke items that you've got, like artwork that starts from the floor and then joins the wall. Is this meant to be like this? Well, now it is. <laughs> we actually ran out of time. It was supposed to be mounted on the wall, yeah. but then they looked good like this. We were like, ah, oh, let's just put them ah. on. So this wasn't a mistake? It wasn't a mistake. Like, this is not meant to be here. This hole in the wall is not meant to be here. The paint that's painted over you where your mistakes were, that's not meant to be here. This is all just meant to be perfect, right? Uh, no. None of them was meant to be. OK. So, <laughs> but yes, so if somebody were just to walk through here and this would, it would be fine. Obviously, we're going to have an adult in this room. No kids allowed. All right. <laughs> now, you mentioned the sort of feminine touches. I'm loving the sort of cashmere things that you guys have got here. And some fluff and what's going on here? Yeah. So that one, yeah. And a little we... bit of a whoopsie yeah. with our painter. No, so this is, this is a mistake. So this isn't meant to be. This is an avant-garde way of incorporating the jungle into your... No, fluff, no. <laughs> but you know, guys, this thing will look good with green, eh? So why not? We could dye it all green. Yep. Well, it's not about what I think. It's not about what you guys think. It's about what the judges uh, think of your rooms. They're going to be coming to check this out shortly. So make sure that you just neaten up these details. All right, no problem. Oof, we need to fix that. With the mad rush to the finish line, it's not surprising to see little mistakes in that first room. However, these small details could make a huge difference in the eyes of the judges. After the break, Team House and Leisure and Team Habitat reveal their first rooms. And I'm sure you're also keen to see if artificial grass on a guest room wall is designed genius or decor delusion. The global trendsetter in kitchen countertops, Caesar Stone, it's different. This is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now, if you've just tuned in, before the break, Team VC revealed their completed guest bedroom. It's now time to take our first look through Team House and Leisure's contemporary space. Going against expectations, Team House and Leisure designed a space with feminine elements to create a room that felt restful and included some interesting artistic features. Do you think someone would live in our room? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> I think so because it's quite warm and spacious and we made sure that we don't stick to very architectural shapes that people would be afraid to 
sleep on the bed. It's like we really let warm. everything yeah. flow and drape. Mm. It's actually very inviting, like the colors from the pinks that we use. As much as we used white, but we really warmed it up with and the textures as well. It's like very inviting. We did thoroughly think about how everything was gonna set and where we're gonna put what, but at some point we stopped thinking up, overthinking everything and thought to ourselves that he is lying. <laughs> <laughs> he was crying up on chairs we couldn't afford at all <laughs> and that things aren't going to plan. <laughs> so I had to say this is what we can afford and it still looks nice. It might not be 16k <laughs> but it works. <laughs> It's not my fault that I gravitated towards expensive pieces. <laughs> Can't deal with you. <laughs> Danilo, welcome to our guest bedroom. I sure. hope you love it. Guys, all it, us. It's looking amazing. I love the color schemes. It's almost African chic. While I was studying design, one of the greatest lessons I learned was as a designer, your job isn't only to make the space beautiful, but then you also need to spot the design problems and try to solve that as much as you can. So one, like one of the biggest problems Vanilla and I identified was that the space appeared to be small and it, it felt really cold. And we tried as much as we can to have more texture and make the space appear as warm as possible. Hence, we went for a warmer color on the walls. And we had like, initially the space had built-in wardrobes. So we broke that out so that the space could appear bigger. And we decided to bring in a shelf and uh, make it more than just like an ordinary shelf you will find. We added like a scissor stone shelf to make it sort of like a shoe storage. And then on the top shelf, you can store whatever you would want to store. And going back to African chic, um, we actually decided to use contemporary South African designers and artists. So we have myself who did the artwork here, and then the custom stool by Joe Payne, and also Tatenda Chidora who did our photograph there. Let's turn our attention to your feature wall. There were some ups and some downs with this one. More ups, <laughs> actually downs than ups, only because I'm inexperienced with painting on walls and it was a new technique that we had to learn. So just knowing the judges, perspectives, and also Tsepo's, because he was watching me like a hawk. <laughs> it was hard to actually develop it, and also just with time, but I trusted the process because I'm used to working with watercolors, and it felt like that, working with watercolors, as you can see on the painting as well. Well, the wall piece does flow into the rest of the room, and I like that. Is that why the curtains also extend beyond the floor and onto the floor? Yes, so what we tried to do is emulate luxury. As pretty as that is, I think the judges are also going to look at practicality too. I mean, isn't that going to pick up a whole bunch of dirt and people are going to trip on it and pull them off the rails? Not at all. I think actually if it gets dirty, then they have to wash it. I'm quite taken aback by the idea that Danilo doesn't really like our cat things. All right. <laughs> like <he's not. laughs> Like Lee's. Speaking of the judges, what do you think that they're going to notice in your room? We took a chance by not balancing the room with the side lamps. So to oppose the side, it is actually coming from the top and mine is like a banker's side lamp. And also with the mirror, since we had a problem of the space appearing smaller, we added a bigger mirror so that it reflects the space and gives an illusion of the room being bigger. Great choice. I think the judge is going to love it. I think the space is looking incredible. Can't wait for them to see it. And I cannot wait for you at home to see it too. Share your thoughts with us. Hashtag Winner Home. Good luck, you two. Thank you. Thank you. From a cozy space to something quite unconventional, Team Habitat's guest bedroom is a reflection of their unique, decadent and unashamedly bold style. You want your guests to come into a room and have a experience. And feel like they are either at a hotel or they, I mean, have just walked into something that is new, different, so like, an escape. And we think our guest room is on point. No, definitely. It's like you're in the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the jungle! Welcome, welcome. Team Habitat, this is looking absolutely amazing. It's so eccentric. Talk me through all the ideas in this room. Sure, where should I start? I'll start with the green. Yeah, we went for a jungle fever vibe. I mean, we had a golf course, so we thought, I mean, bring the green indoors so you can play your golf. Or just get into bed and cozy on in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then we yeah. put in some chandeliers. Gold, we, gold is our statement I mean, piece that we always bring in. 
Yeah. So you kind of brazzle without a little bit of ching a ling a ling. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, the shutters. We brought in a zebra that you can actually sit on. Would you yeah. like to take a seat, Denise? <laughs> okay. Come on, take a seat. <laughs> and you can put your. Ooh. Oh my. <laughs> okay, well, we'll fix that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. always with the first challenge with rooms like this, especially when it's the first exercise, a lot of things don't go the way that you would have liked them to go. Absolutely. You know, talk me through some of those things that, that didn't go your way. Brady's got a list as long as the <laughs> yeah. Nile River. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, obviously, with time, in terms of also getting the contractors and getting their full attention, we yeah. obviously go hardcore. So even when the lighting guys came, it's like, you're not hanging one chandelier, you're hanging five. five. And then it's like, whoa, that's going to take a day. And it's like, no, no, you got to do it in one hour. Because mm. the carpet guys are coming and they're also waiting outside. So it seems like you guys have dressed to match the drapes today. Um, do you think you've designed this for yourselves or for everybody's taste? It is a part of us in terms of the aesthetic. It's wild. It's eclectic. It's a mix of different textures. Yes. But at the same time, it's versatile. Yes. If you don't like the blinds, you just roll it up and you've yes. just got your window. Yes. You know, if you don't like the astro, it's, it's a carpet. A, it's a carpet. You remove this and you go with what I would call a blander yeah. version of the astro. And if you don't like the green grass, I don't know. Get out of town. Get out of, get out of town. Get out of town because you're at the wrong golf <laughs> <place. laughs> I've noticed always with big, bold, eccentric ideas that sometimes the details can be missed out. And I've noticed things like here on your grass wall, Things are not quite stuck on correctly. This and this ain't good. Aside from some of the finer details, you guys have gone for some really incredible ones too, like breaking down one of the walls to create a door. We wanted to turn it into an ensuite, and we are happy that we installed the door. We wouldn't oh, no. change it. And you'll see coming up in the next rooms <laughs> why we did it, and it's going to be exciting. And more walls will be going down. <laughs> well, ultimately, I don't get you to win that 100,000 Rand cash. Our judges do. What do you think they'll love? And what do you think they're going to spot to some of their concerns in your room? I hope the judges will see our fearlessness. Like, we're not afraid to go into a space and actually turn it upside down, inside out, and create something so, that I would, yeah, and magical. I think they, we are nervous about the planning and the details of small things. Yeah. I'm comfortable with most of the details, just with the last minute things like the astro turf on the wall. Well, gents, well done. It's looking amazing. It's up to the judges, though. They'll be here shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Now that you've seen the rooms, why not lend your support to your favorite design duo and secure your chance to win big at the same time? Visit privateproperty.co.za and click on the Winner Home icon. You'll be directed to the competition entry page where you'll answer an easy question and then vote for your favorite design duo. This enters you into our bi-weekly competition where you stand a chance to win a Sealy Posturepedic mattress and base set. Plus, you will automatically be entered into our grand prize competition where your choice of one of three homes completely by our design duos could be yours. That's a prize valued at over 3 million rand. T's and C's apply and can be found on privateproperty.co.za. So if we've inspired you to live that estate lifestyle, then stay right where you are, because after the break, we're taking a look at the different types of estates from around South Africa in our property advice segment. Grundig, for a good reason. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. It's good to have you back with us on Winner Home on Afternoon Express. We're on SABC3. So you get a chance potentially to win yourself a dream home on an incredible estate in Johannesburg. And so we really need to become experts in estate living. Now, over the course of the series, we'll explore various aspects related to buying and living on those estates. Today, we're joined by Grant Gavin to discuss the different types of property available on estates in South Africa and how to choose the right type of property for you. Grant, welcome to our loft. Thank you, Danilo. Good to be here. You're a wealth of wisdom. We met at the last series of Winner Home uh, when we came to shoot with some of the homes that you were looking at. Um, yeah. So property clearly is something that is booming and everybody should invest. Or am I mistaken? No, property is always your one step to creating wealth. Your first okay. step to creating wealth, let me say. 
Uh, it's a good long-term investment, and, and property is something that we should all aspire to own okay. uh, for, the, for the benefit of wealth creation. Okay, and then estates obviously is a, a way to do that. And everyone's been pushing estates quite a lot at the moment because I think it's a hot topic. I mean, is investing in estates also a great one? 100%. You always want to invest, A, in a good location, B, you want to buy at a good price. But I think most importantly, you always want to buy where there's going to be good mm. demand to sell at some point. And with the states and the way South African buyers look for security when they look to buy a property is one of their main priorities. Mm. Everybody wants to get onto estates. It's a growing trend, and I believe that South Africa has the largest number of estates than most countries in the world. I think there are officially, the, we've got the largest number of estates in the world, which is such a fascinating f fact to consider. And I think it's because of security, I'd imagine. Yeah, and, and security is coming at a premium. So if you look at the prices that you're paying for properties on estates versus off the estates, you're getting way more for your money off the estate in terms of size of accommodation and yeah. land size, yeah. but you're definitely paying a premium getting onto these estates because people want security. Mm. And uh, that's driving prices up. Okay, uh, explain to me about estates because one thing that I've noticed by traveling to all the different estates around the country is they all are slightly different. Some of them are very lifestyle community driven, some of them are huge, some of them are golf estates, some of them are residential. What kind of different estates do you get? Are they like, are they categories or? Well, I think it all comes down to lifestyle and, and it depends on what you as the buyer are looking to buy into in terms of lifestyle. So for example, if you're a golfer or you're a keen equestrian mm. fan, you're gonna buy into a golf or equestrian estate. If you love nature, you're gonna go into a wildlife or an eco estate. And a lot of these eco estates are being built now with particular designs for you know, ensuring that architecture is matching mm. trends in the environment um, for, for long term. So there's all sorts of environments that you can fit into in terms okay. of the type of lifestyle that you're looking for. So you must go window shopping. I think that's an important thing to go visit the websites, go see the properties, go visit, go get a sense of who you are as an individual and how you'd like your living spaces to represent that. Yeah, I think most people know that. Um, mm. I think most people know exactly what they're looking for when it comes to estates. Okay. Obviously that estate's got to be within your proximity of where you work. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to be commuting too far away from the estate to your place mm. of work. So it kind of comes down to what's in your area as well. Yeah. All right, let's talk a bit about the properties within estates. It's something that fascinates me quite a lot. I mean, we always see these beautiful shots of estates and you think of these mansions mm. out there with long driveways and fountains and waterfalls as you get up to those houses. And I'm thinking, I can't afford a house like that. Yeah, well, I think that's what the marketing will tell you, showing you these beautiful homes um, on these massive plots. But there is a home for everybody within an estate, obviously depending on budget. You're gonna have an entry level home. Typically that's gonna come in a sectional title complex. Perhaps it's a two bed apartment, but you're gonna have something that would match your budget from a particular price point. Um, obviously if you're wanting to live in that sectional title type environment, you're gonna be living more in cluster type homes yeah. with lots of people around you, or you can move onto your own piece of land, get your own stand, build your own home, I have a freehold property and you're going to have a little bit more space, but that's going to come at a higher price. I'm sure. All right, so the sectional titles, etc. I mean, are, are they affordable for the regular home buyer? Because I mean, you're also getting the security, that's the added value that you're getting for one of those pieces of property. So the nice thing about those is that they're great to buy, hold on to, and then sell because there's going to be such a big demand. Yeah. Remember, if, you, if you're comparing apples with apples and you're looking at the, the size accommodation that you're going to get off an estate versus on an estate, you're always going to be paying more. Okay. So it's going to come down to your pocket and what you can afford. So when we talk about is it affordable for everybody to buy on an estate, Probably not, um, that's, the, that's the first answer I'd give. But in terms of if you're looking for example for a three million rand home off the estate, you're gonna get a much bigger home in terms of accommodation. You are paying a premium when you go onto an estate, but you're getting the lifestyle and you're getting the security and the peace of mind that comes with it. And there's gonna be a huge demand for those homes as the, obviously yes. the country grows, as the population grows, so the value of those properties is gonna increase drastically yes, I, too. I keep ramming home on this point, and I'm sorry to do it, but security is the number one priority yeah. for a home buyer True. at the moment. Totally. In South Africa. Grant, thank you so much. I'm going to pick your brain again next week. Now, remember that this season of Win a Home, you stand a chance of winning a beautiful home on the Eye of Africa estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and answer a very easy question. Keep a lookout each week for more property advice and tips right here on Win a Home. You also can visit the Private Property website to learn more about the Win a Home design duos, see their completed rooms, and find out more about the incredible prizes that you could win. Coming up, those judges arrive to Inspect the guest bedroom. Don't go anywhere. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life.
Welcome back to Win a Home on Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. Now, earlier on, I got the chance to see what our design duos had produced for their first challenge, that all-important guest bedroom. And luckily for me, I don't make the decisions. The judges do, and they still need to take a look at the rooms for themselves. Now, the first challenge is significant because it will identify the early front runners in the competition. So it only seemed fitting to invite an industry heavyweight as a guest judge on the panel. And just like that, task one, the guest bedroom is complete. All that's left is for our judges to evaluate each one. And here they are. I actually don't want to see the judges. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> just going home. They are winner of Winner Home Season 1 and interior designer, Donald Mumalo. Okay, so I see my old boss, which is the judge, uh, coming through. And... He knows all my weakest points, and I think he's going to point out those things. Mpo used to work for me, and that doesn't mean that I'll cut him any slack. He needs to work as hard as the other contestants, and we're looking forward to what they produce. From Plascon, Katlejo Kondlo. Katlejo, like, she might really penalize us if we got the technique wrong. And finally, our guest judge, the brilliant and renowned Stephen Falk. My name is Stephen Falk. I'm an interior designer. I've been in the business for about 30, 35 years. I'm passionate about interiors. I love mixing many different styles together. I love very modern things with traditional things. I think every approach to every job has to be unique. I think, you know, if one sort of says, well, why don't you do what you've done before? I, I wouldn't be interested. You know, if you do things, take it to the limit, but that's not good enough. You take it beyond that. I got a bit intimidated because he's like an industry pro. Being judged by him is completely scary. I mean, it's an honor on our side. Because this is like one of our first interior design challenges. And it's gonna be great to hear the feedback yeah. from him. I hope he loves it. I hope he just <laughs> dies when he walks in there. <laughs> They will love, this is me forcing it, they will love our whole room. <laughs> <laughs> I love the wallpaper. I think it gives great impact. It sets the theme of the room and it gives you a focal point. I don't like the carpet. I think the carpet means nothing. The floor is great. The floor is not cold and I just think the carpet is kind of wrong. I love how the strong colours and the soft colours sort of work together. Mm. The green and the soft pink here really, I think for me, works really quite well. The, the styling is really quite beautiful. I like the bed. It's not too big. I like the side table that can be used to work and to obviously keep it away from the wardrobe. I just don't like the pillows at the bottom. They're a bit too big mm. for the bed. I love this room. I think it's gorgeous. Just the beautiful green colour. It's quite deep and rich and it's on trend. I think it's gorgeous. I love the textures that they've brought in. I mean, this is gorgeous. I mean, if you just feel this, it's amazing. <gasps> what happened here? Yeah. That will teach them. How could they paint with furniture in the room? Yeah, it's quite a pity that they didn't finish up with the pictures. It would have gone beautifully with the curtains. So that's just an additional negative for the room. I definitely like the fact that you walk into the space and it just envelopes you. It's really, for one word, a beautiful room. I like how the Caesar stone is being used as artwork and not necessarily just Caesar stone. This room is vibrant. It is brave at the same time. That wallpaper juxtaposed against that beautiful dark green, that olive green. Absolutely stunning. It's a room that is very strong on one side. So when you walk into the room, it's great. But when you're actually in the room and look back, as alive as it is, looking the one way, it is dead the other. The Visa room, for me, feels bought. Particularly the way the furnishings were arranged, it felt like something I would walk into a store, see it on display, and just say, I want these elements and just buy it and put it in my room. I'd love to see Mpo and Lesejo bringing more of their personality into the space. I'd like to see them coming through and not just buying 
items off the shelf. I think it's important as a designer to design and to curate a space with objects that you've actually made or you've sourced or you've had made. I think that really will set you apart from the crowd. It's very important that you remember the time that you allocated. It's unacceptable that you don't finish and complete your room. Otherwise, it just takes away from the wonderful design that you've put together. Wowza. What do you think the judges won't like about our room? The wall. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> I'm so worried about that wall. I'm not worried about anything, to be honest. <laughs> I really, really love this room. I think it's well designed. I love how they did the paint technique. It really just breaks the pink. Otherwise, it would have felt too, too pink and too girly. So I really love the fact that they incorporated the green into it. For me, I especially love that there's so much effort that went into yes, this room. Yes. Uh, the shelf above the bed, that's quite beautiful. I, I love how it's so well curated. There's, there's, everywhere you look, there's something beautiful. Mm. I think there are things that are designed in. Yes. You know, I like the way the cupboard has actually been designed and made using Caesar stone, using steel. I think, you know, people have come and actually designed and given yes. a lot of thought to this. And there is a balance and there's a lightness and a sort of whimsical feel about it, which I think works. There's life in this room. The plants are not fake, they, they're real. Um, even the plants that are used are quite architectural as well. There is a balance. If you look at the Caesar stone shelf above the, the, the collectibles and you look at the way a chair has been used, there's an old lamp, there's a new lamp, the way pink has been used. I think there's, there's a great balance. The true mark of a designer for me, I'm looking for somebody who can make 2,000 rand look like 20,000 rand, and 20,000 rand look like 200,000 rand. And this room, with the budget they had, really looks like a lot more than what they had. The downside to the room was the painting that they had. It was beautifully done, however quite melancholic, and it's opposite to the whimsical, light feeling of the room. I didn't like the curtains. I think the curtains let the whole room down. One should have done something that was designer, that was simple. The way things were actually designed in all kind of put together in a designer's way, um, the curtains didn't speak that language. The one thing about this room is that it lacks storage. I think the bed, they could have used bedside pedestals instead of just tables because that, that would have allowed them more storage space. I think in every room there needs to be some certain level of privacy or where you hide things. And this room is quite restrictive in that regard because everything is so exposed. The judges are in a room, I'm seeing big <laughs> eyes, and I hope it's big eyes of, wow. Yes! 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 yes, yes, yes. Amen! Because we don't really stop at one detail, we literally, wherever your eye turns, there's a showstopper. All of us are standing to silence. I mean, we could only say one word. Um, it's memorable. Brave. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm actually quite excited to see a room like this. It completely represents the designers. I think it's completely who they are and I can see that coming through. And I'm very happy that they feel confident to present a room like this. The room is very unique. I don't think you'll find a room like that anywhere else. So it's got strong personality and it makes it stand out because of that. The designers have been very brave. They have mixed things that are dramatic, that are quite kind of shocking. Whether one wants to wake up in that room or not is um, up to him ever sleeping there. Um, will I be able to sleep in this room? I'm not so sure. I think I wouldn't want to wake up with a hangover in this room. Guys, you need to edit. Um, there's too much happening in that space. Simplify it all. So our judges are absolutely living up to their promise to be brutally honest with our design duos when assessing their rooms. Now, another aspect that will affect the duo's performance in each room is money management. Each duo has a total of 300,000 Rand to decorate their house. That's over and above the sponsored elements. Now, they have freedom to apportion this budget for each and every room, but if they overspend in one room, it'll affect the budget that they've allocated to another space. So for the guest bedroom, Team VC's budget was 45,000 Rand, 
and their total spend was just over 40,000 Rand, completing the room under budget by 4,300 Rand. Team House and Leisure also allocated 45,000 Rand to their guest bedroom and they overspent by one and a half thousand Rand. Team Habitat had the biggest budget at 51,000 Rand and they still overspent a whopping 8,000 Rand to complete their guest bedroom. Well, it looks like this fierce duo is also fierce in their spending and will have to really rein in costs to stay within their budget. But there might be a little bit of help for one of our design duos if they win that first challenge. This is my first competition. I've never entered competition or waited for results like this. Uh, I'm not scared, but uh, I'm a little bit concerned about Lissiko. I don't know how she's I feeling. am scared. My throat is dry. I'm mm -hmm. sweating. It's only the first challenge, dude, so don't stress <laughs> about it. Daniel is about to announce who is the winner for this case bedroom. And I mean, it better be us. <laughs> I mean, hell <laughs> to the yes. We want to win. We want to hear our name. No, we're not going down. No. We're about to hear the results and I'm so super nervous. I feel like I'm gonna dissolve on this chair. <laughs> Contestants, welcome back. I'm sure you're eagerly awaiting the judges' feedback and to find out who will be our winner of task one. What if I told you that the winner of challenge one wins themselves an extra 5,000 Rand on their budget? Would that be exciting? 5,000 extra is like, 10 million in this, in this <laughs> thing. Like you're getting an extra hand in. Like it's a lot of money. Right, let's start with our judges' feedback. Team Habitat. The judges only used three words to describe your room. Memorable, brave, and wow. It was wow. And wow. It was a yes. <laughs> Apparently their eyes were so big. You could see them from the eye of Africa. <laughs> yeah. So I really I thought, oh, we are winning. <laughs> Hashtag winning. Team Hack Habitat. Yes. Yeah. Team House and Leisure. The judges described your room as whimsical and felt that all the items were perfectly curated. However, they felt you were let down by your curtains. And I told you so. We still love our curtains. <laughs> I still love our flowing curtains and... But then probably if we had taken them a bit higher and mm -hmm. covered the whole wall, it would have been better. better. But then... And I think it was the space thing between the bed yeah. and the curtains. I think it's someone can't really walk. Wow, well, yeah, it flows too close to the bed. To the bed, yes. Team VC. Your choice of wallpaper and paint colour, even though some of it ended up on your furniture, were highlights for the judges. They did, however, feel that you were let down by the imbalance in your room. They felt one side dominated the other. We are quite happy with what they said, honestly speaking. We just thought it would be very nice if we finished the room. Yeah. It would be nice if we did finish the room. And with that feedback, there can only be one winner. Walking away with that 5,000 Rand added to their budget. The winner of challenge one. Is. Team House and Leisure. <laughs> Congratulations. Danila just called our name as the oh. we won. <laughs> so, so happy. <laughs> but also it gave us a lot of confidence that we're actually doing well. And we shouldn't be comfortable. We, this is Definitely. just like the beginning. We need to work even yeah. more hard to collect all those five Ks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy we lost to them. Uh, Not to say anything about the other team, but uh, I'm glad. Uh, 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 we didn't lose, we didn't lose. They just took the first challenge. How soon did you take the win and sure. I felt like I was, you know when you're at Miss Universe and mm. someone has snatched that trophy. And you are, you better tell the homecoming queen to hold on to her crown. Because we're coming back for that crown. We're coming. And we're going to win the big one. 
So our design viewers have had the first taste of competition and now they are hungry for more. Next week, they're served a brief for their second challenge. Could it be a bathroom, the lounge, a bedroom, or perhaps none of those? To find out, join us again next week on Winner Home on Afternoon Express. From me, Daniela Aquisto, have a great weekend. Ciao, ciao. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.